Okay, we're going to talk about electric power. Is electric power important? Well, yes it is. It um, powers all of your electronic devices, your home, et cetera, et cetera. And so we're going to talk about the electric power delivered to a circuit element, which turns out to be the same formula for the electric power that's delivered by a circuit element. So just to give a, a hint about where this is coming from, let's consider the charge, delta Q, flowing through a battery where the potential difference between the battery terminals is V. What power do we have going on here? Well, the energy, if you remember that, the concept that we talked about a couple of sections ago, the electric potential energy is a, or the voltage is defined, defined as the electric potential energy divided by the charge. And so the energy itself, if you multiply both sides by the charge, the, this energy is going to be a charge times a voltage. So that's what this is here. But a power is an energy divided by a time. If you remember back from uh, last semester, physics 2010. So an energy divided by time gives a power. Well, the energy is this, the delta time is here, but you already know what delta Q by d divided by delta T is. It's I, it's the current. And so the power is uh, delivered to a circuit element is the current through that element, current in the element or through the element, like a resistor, the potential difference across the element, measured in volts, and then the power delivered to the element is measured in watts. And just to remember, uh, a power is an energy divided by time, right? Which I think you remember from last semester. Energy measured in joules, Time measured by uh, in seconds, a joule per second is a watt. And that's, uh, that's the concept. Now, there will be, I'm not asking you to memorize these because it's silly to memorize them because you can just do a tiny bit of algebra to get to these other forms for the power. This is a very common form when you're thinking about resistors. How do you get to this form? Well, power is I times V, but V is I times R. That's the definition of resistance. And that just gives you I squared R, this relationship here. Um, so basically what we've done is use this, this general form. This form always works. P equals IV always works. Um, and we replace this voltage with I times R. We can also replace the current in P equals IV. Well, V equals IR. If I want to get rid of the current, then let me solve for it. I'm going to divide both sides by R. The R's cancel, and we get I is V over R. So if I put this I in place of the I in the P equals I V, then we'll get V squared in the numerator divided by R. So we'll use both of these at different times, but that's how you relate. If you can't remember these, all the better. You can always derive it. All you need to know is this, P equals I V and V equals I R and you can get any of these other relationships. Insulated wiring in a house can safely carry a maximum current of 18 amps. Happy day. The electrical outlets in the house provide an alternating voltage of 120 volts. The space heater, when plugged into the outlet, operates at an average power of 1500 watts. So how many space heaters can safely be plugged into a single electrical outlet 
and turned on for an extended period of time. Some of you may have experienced this before. We have. We've plugged in space heaters when the power goes out. And if you plug too many into the circuit, you can blow, um, uh, you can trip a circuit breaker. And this is exactly the problem we're talking about here. So the power is I times V. We know the current is the maximum current that we can safely handle. And the voltage is 120 volts. And so if we plug in I times V, 18 amps, actually I'm going to do this a different way. I'm going to actually calculate the current that one heater draws. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to divide both sides by V so I can solve for, solve for the, the current. The V's on the right side cancel and you get that I is P over V. Okay, so now we're going to plug in the power of this heater. Divided by the voltage of 120 volts. And here these zeros cancel. Um, so we're talking about around 150 divided by 12 is maybe 12 times 12 is 144. So it's right around 12 amps, approximately. So about 12 amps is what a single space heater, how much current it's going to draw. If you put two of them into the circuit, you're going to draw double that current. And if you double this current, then you're starting to, well, then you're in the danger zone because your, your circuits can only handle 18 amps and, and twice this would be 12 amps. So, or twice this would be 24 amps. So you can really only safely put one space heater on that circuit if they, if they draw, if they have a power of about 1500 watts. Uh, another example, in the flashlight, the current is 0.4 amps. The voltage is 3 volts. Uh, as we talked about before, find the power delivered to the bulb and the energy dissipated in the bulb in 5.5 minutes. This is a fun problem. So power dissipated, that's totally easy. We know the current. We know the voltage. There's the current, there's the voltage. So it's 1.2 watts of energy, of power. And the energy dissipated, well, you know that the power is an energy divided by a time. So you can solve for the energy dissipated by multiplying both sides by the time. Times cancel on the right side, and you get that E is P times T. So that's this equation right here. And the power we just worked out is 1.2 watts. The time is 330 seconds. That's the equivalent of 5.5 minutes times 60 seconds per minute gives you 330 seconds. And that's how much energy you're going to dissipate in that, um, use up, dissipate in that flashlight. Where does the energy go in the flashlight? You say, well, um, some of it goes into the light generated by the flashlight. Some of it goes into heat generated. The batteries heat up. The flashlight element heats up, etc. So 